Hey folks, it's Mike here, and uh, it's been a couple weeks since I broadcast uh, live here, so uh, first things first, I posted uh, Fire in the Lake Round 2 yesterday, so if you're interested in that, please give that a watch. Um, but uh, back from the Compass Games Expo this week, and I had a lot of fun, uh, so I wanted to go over a couple of the things I got. Uh, first, obviously this is not a Compass Games title, but it uh, passed me on the way out the door uh, to the Expo. Um, and there are a number of unboxing videos, and since I have like four games that I want to look at, um, I'm not going to go ahead and do a whole unboxing, but uh, I am looking forward to giving this one a try. This is from the designer of No Retreat. It's a GMT production, so you know it's uh, high quality. Um, and something that I found really interesting about this game, um, there are no dice, uh, it uses uh, cards for resolutions, um, the counters are nice and large, um, these are like the, the smaller round counters, and these are like status markers. Um, you have a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous map, and... You can kind of see a little bit of the terrain there. And it is uh, an area map, um, which I think only like my, probably the people that have watched my videos like the most know this about me because I don't talk about it that much. I really don't care for area movement games. So um, this is like me giving it another shot. Because um, I've played a few that I really, really didn't care for at all. Um, but that's a matter of personal preference. So you can see the map here stretches, of course, from Greater Germany in the west to um, the Urals just beyond um, Moscow, Caucasus in the south. Um, pretty standard east front game. <coughs> in terms of what's covered on the map. Um, two to eight hours for the camp, or eight hours about for the campaign game, so it says. Um, which, that's a nice, you know, bite size played in an evening. Uh, so speaking of caucuses, this is something that I have had, um, but I've never played. Um, that and a dozen other, well, it's not a dozen probably more like three or four dozen uh, other games that uh, I have not yet played. So I printed out the uh, revised rules. This is the variable uh, combat system. Um, Errata counters from Compass Games. Um, what I will say is that, uh, you know, for whatever, whenever there's an issue, they always, they always make it right. Uh, so, this one I ordered and the erotic counters were right in there, so that's awesome. I didn't have to make like a special email or anything like that. Uh, so you can see Fall Blau is a very long game, uh, 60 turns. Obviously there's a number of smaller scenarios, and really there's just a ton of charts and tables. That's not even all of them. Uh, there's more here. Um, this is the rules as written. Uh, here are the counter sheets. They're kind of tiny counters, um, especially in comparison to um, the game that we're just looking at. Um, so, like I said, it is the variable combat system, so here are the, the variable strengths. Uh, and here are some of the maps. This is like the small inset map, which is like for... Yeah. Um, this is actually... Novorossiysk, um, which is where uh, the little land uh, takes place. Uh, yeah. Uh, all right. So I wanted to show you this as a preface to the next one, and you may already guess what that is, and that is Kharkov battles before and after Fall Blau. So this is the sequel slash prequel, um, and uh, um, 
this I think comes with three or four scenarios including a linking one where you know if you've got the table space or you're at a convention you can play uh, a mega game so uh, these are uh, revised rules and from my understanding uh, you can play uh, the original Fall Blau with these rules. I'm probably going to go online to clarify that, but um, you see uh, more charts. These are campaign setup charts, and we'll take a look at the map. And this is the Dinipir River. Um, there's the uh, the bend. Uh, so I know a couple of these are on like the inset or on the map, smaller map here, uh, Kharkov, uh, right there. Um, yikes, I want to fold that the wrong way, just opened it. Um, okay, so I want to, uh, more charts and stuff. Um, let's see, these are the, uh, the new style counters here, they come plastic wrapped and uh, they are ready to go. They're ready to be popped out. So um, I am looking forward to playing this. I'm probably going to start with this game as opposed to uh, Fall Blau just because it has the um, added advantages of being a smaller footprint um, and having the uh, revised rules. So next one, uh, this is this one that's been out for a while. I got it uh, on sale. Um, it's absolute victory, and uh, it's another one of my uh, uh, World War II uh, strategics that I've purchased. So I know in the past I've talked about doing a comparison video, and I will do that um, at some point. Um, but right now, I feel like I could probably only speak to one or two of them with any degree of authenticity. Like, um, you know, I've, I've puttered around with uh, A World at War and A Gathering Storm, but I don't really think I could speak to it as an experience, apart from, say, the experience of learning the game. Um, so this is uh, a grand strategic and it has uh, both the European theater, the Pacific theater, and Antarctica. Um, you have, what I really like here, are these uh, event booklets, um, which provide a lot of uh, randomness, um, variability in your game, um, which you may or may not like. Right? I like it because, I mean, you want to play a game, right? And you want to be entertained and surprised by it, right? You don't want to play the same, uh, this turn Poland falls, then this turn France falls, and now we're going to Greece, and now we're getting ready to invade the Soviet Union. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with a game like that, but, you know, uh, some little twists and turns along the way. Um... What I really like here is the uh, uh, presidential election table from 1944. Um, let's see, where is he? Henry Wallace. Uh, shout out to uh, the, the main man himself. Um, let's see. Uh, and over here you have Charles Lindbergh. Uh, Wendell Wilkie, back for more. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a it's an interesting system. Douglas MacArthur, very interesting. Um, it says if Henry Wallace is elected president or ever becomes president for any reason, see Rule fifty seven point three. Well, I kind of want to find out what that is. Let me see if I can find it quickly. So there's three rule books here. One of them is like your base rules. Uh, one is a scenario and like charts and stuff. Um, and then you have what's labeled as like regional rules, which is probably like um, okay. <laughs> A 
All right. Uh, if Henry Wallace ever becomes VP or president, roll a d6. On a 1 to 2, the Confederate States of America is formed immediately as a pro Nazi minor ally. Wow. I mean, I don't know if things were that drastic, but, uh, I mean, it certainly would provoke a response, um, but I don't know if, I don't know if it would be like, uh, one like that. That's certainly interesting. Uh, I guess feel free to ignore that at your will. Um, so task force, army groups, just tons and tons of charts, you know, just another table hog, my favorite. Um, train key events record, diplomacy alignment. Uh, here's a look at the map. I know some have called it like a bit garish, but um, I wish you could see it because it really isn't. It's nice. Um, I think I think much hay was made about it because it's not what people are used to. And uh, some people are uh, change adversant. Adverse. Uh, here are the counters. Uh, we'll just take a look at some of them. Um, pretty um, streamlined. Oh, here are the uh, here are the Confederates: Army of the West, North Virginia, Mississippi, and Tennessee. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, this looks so cool. I like that the. Uh, the generals and the admirals are represented. Uh, it's definitely a very interesting setup for a game. Um, just uh, I hope to be able to understand it all. And uh, put it all together. Alright. So that's a look at the stuff that I picked up uh, in the last couple days. Um, what's on the radar? Um, well, I saw today uh, that Mark Herman and uh, I forget the gentleman's name. Um, he does the Next War series. I think he goes by Toad Killer um, Mitchell Mitchell Land. I think um, they produ they posted a production. Uh, copies of Vietnam and the Pacific War, respectively, um, which are both uh, two very exciting titles that I hope to have in my hands soon as well. Um, all right, last thing I wanted to show you um, is War and Peace. Um, I saw this played at Compass Games Expo. Actually, I saw a couple of Napoleonics games played at Compass Games Expo. So I have a hankering for this, so I am going to try it again. I'm going to try it again and uh, maybe film some of that for you. So I hope you enjoyed this quick recap of uh, some of the games I picked up and uh, some of the stuff you can look forward to seeing uh, in my videos. I will probably start with Absolute War because that seems to be the most straightforward. So thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you around.